Today, I am reviewing El Toro. No, not the Antonin Prefab at Six Flags Great Adventure, I already have a review in that one. Instead, I am reviewing the lesser talked about GCI at Freizeit Park Plon in East Germany that happens to share the same name as one of the world's best coasters. And to be honest, I had no idea what to expect going into El Toro. This is among the smallest coasters ever built by Great Coasters International, but it has an interesting layout loaded with bunny hills. So in this video, I will be reviewing the German El Toro that no one talks about. This El Toro opened in 2009 as the third GCI in all of Europe, and it was the first custom coaster Freizeit Park Plan ever added. The coaster starts by winding its way over and under the Wild Wasserbahn log flume before dashing past the park's extensive collection of trees. And the ride is also located on a hillside, which adds even more excitement to the layout as you constantly change elevation. The coaster's entrance is in the very back of the park. I visited on a summer weekday, and much to my surprise, the coaster had a queue line spilling out onto the midway. Despite fairly fast dispatches, I still had to wait roughly 45 minutes for each ride in El Toro because it operates with just one train. And you'll be hearing country music for most of that wait. This is a western theme park after all. Like most GCIs, El Toro sports a 24 passenger Millennium Flyer train with the familiar T-Bar lap bar. Just make sure to hold on to the lap bar after it's checked or else it'll continuously lower throughout the ride which can make it more difficult to feel this coaster's airtime. This is an issue you'll find in most GCIs that run the Millennium Flyer trains. What is unique about this Millennium Flyer train is that this one operates without any seatbelts. We've started seeing this on GCI's newer coasters, particularly the ones at the SeaWorld parks, but those ones operate with hard foam seats. El Toro, meanwhile, still has the super cushiony seats you found on GCI's earlier Millennium Flyer trains. Between the less restrictive restraint and the more comfortable seats, I'd argue these are the best Millennium Flyers out there. In terms of seat selection, I had a very slight preference for the front, but my back row ride was nearly as good. Certain elements ride better in the front and back of the train. Before going into the ride experience, I want to note the conditions under which I experienced El Toro. It was a cooler 60 degree day, and most wood coasters run better in the heat. I gave the coaster a few hours to warm up, but unfortunately, it just didn't have the same punch of GCI's other roller coasters. Once dispatched, you ascend the 81 foot or 25 meter tall lift hill. That is followed by one of the most interesting drops that GCI has ever created. This 71 foot or 22 meter tall drop starts with a decently steep straight drop. And then the bottom of the drop is this shallow twist to the right. The first part of the drop gives a tiny pop of airtime in the back cars, while the second part has a solid head chopper as you dive into a tunnel. Now unfortunately, this pullout is rather shaky. Overall, El Toro tracks fairly well, but there are a few shaky valleys with this pullout from the first drop being the roughest part of the ride. The drop is followed by a quick twist up and to the left, which delivers a good lateral jolt as you rapidly change directions. The top of this turn gives airtime throughout the train as it levels off. That's how fast you're going. Those up front get a decent pop of airtime, while those towards the back only get a weak pop of airtime. But again, you usually don't get that entering a turnaround if you're in the back car. El Toro then navigates an elongated turn that dips down and up. You really feel El Toro's speed in this element, and you also get some moderate laterals too. El Toro then shoots through a tunnel and rises into a turnaround, giving those up front a decent pop of airtime. The first part of El Toro feels fast and out of control between the speed, near misses, and rapid fire elements. But unfortunately, the rest of El Toro felt a whole lot slower and tamer. El Toro then traverses four straight bunny hills that travel down the hillside. And this element feels sort of like a quad down because each drop dips further down and there's no break in between the elements. Unfortunately, the airtime is not as abundant as you may think when you see these elements. 
The first Bunny Hill, in fact, offers no airtime. The second one offers very weak floater airtime throughout the train. The third one is much smaller and offers weak floater airtime up front and an okay pop of floater airtime towards the back. Then the fourth Bunny Hill is the largest, but it only offers weak floater airtime up front. El Toro then shoots into another turnaround. The entry into this element gives an okay floater pop up front, and the exit out of this element gives some very good floater airtime in the back. It's probably the best single airtime moment on the entire ride. From here, El Toro really dies. This turnaround is followed by an L-shaped turnaround that unfortunately offers no airtime nor laterals. El Toro then zips around a minimally banked low turn that offers some mild laterals. You then traverse two more bunny hills. Even though these hills are small and the coaster still has an appreciable amount of speed, these hills fail to offer any airtime. El Toro then twists up into the brake run, offering a weak dose of laterals on the way before coming to a stop. This ends the 2,379 foot or 725 meter long coaster. So what would I rate the German El Toro? I would give Freizei Park Plon's wooden coaster a 6 out of 10. El Toro is a decent ride. I love this coaster's placement. The first third has some fun tunnels and interactions with the log flume, then the rest of the ride is obscured by trees. This setting and placement is probably the coaster's biggest strength. However, the coaster's biggest issue is the inconsistent pacing. El Toro is a coaster that starts strong with some solid airtime and rapid turns before fading. Most GCIs deliver quick pops of airtime throughout. This is what I expected from El Toro, but unfortunately the bunny hills in the middle of the ride offered weak floater airtime at best, and the final ones did nothing. Now maybe I just caught El Toro on a bad day. Again, it was a cooler day. But I've ridden similarly sized GCIs such as Invader in comparable weather conditions and experienced much stronger rides. If you've gotten better rides in El Toro, definitely let me know down in the comments. While this El Toro doesn't hold a candle to the one at Six Flags Grey Adventure or the upper tier GCI coasters, it's still a fun ride. I probably place it towards the bottom of my GCI ranks since it just doesn't have the same intensity or pacing as their other coasters. So those are my thoughts on El Toro, the GCI found at Freizei Park Plon in Germany. What are your thoughts on this wood coaster? I would love to hear what you think about it down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.